I'm going to show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi into a VPN that you can host in your home. A VPN acts as a middleman for your internet traffic. You go encrypted from your computer to the internet service provider to the VPN. The VPN decrypts everything and then goes VPN, internet service provider, to whatever website you want it to go to. It protects you and adds a layer of obscurity. And we're going to use this package called PyVPN. Let's open up a command prompt or terminal window and then access the terminal of your Raspberry Pi through SSH, or you could go directly into your Raspberry Pi and open a terminal from there. SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi, password. Now that I'm in the terminal of my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to copy and paste that command from the Pi VPN website. It'll also be in the description. And just note, before we start, you're going to need access to your router. If you don't have access to your router, this project won't work. Okay, to continue installation, PyVPN has an automated installer that we can control with our keyboard. Enter, and it needs a static IP address. But right now our Pi has the dynamic IP address. So each time it connects to Wi-Fi, it could have a new IP, and that's going to make it difficult to act like a permanent VPN. What we can do is go into our router and set our Pi's IP address to the static and make it always uh, 192.168.1.10. Every router is pretty different, so if you don't know how to log into your router, I would Google how to log into my Netgear router, how to log into my Linksys router. In my case, I have a Netgear router, and I just go to 192. 168.1.1 and then I have a password and username. If you've never set your password or username, it might be just printed directly onto your router. Okay, we're going to look at attached devices and here is my Raspberry Pi with its IP address. And we want to set that IP address to be static. If you don't know how to set a static IP on your router, I would recommend googling the phrase how to set a static IP address on my blank router, Netgear router, Linksys router, etc. For me, I go into advanced, setup, LAN setup, I click add here under address reservation and then apply. I've already added it. So now every time this device with this MAC address that I'm not showing you connects to the router, the router is going to give it this IP address. Back to our terminal. Yes, we have a DHCP reservation. And now pick a local user. I only have one, Pi, enter. You get a choice here, WireGuard or OpenVPN. WireGuard is like the new cool younger brother of OpenVPN. Not as widely adopted yet, but that's just because it's new. WireGuard is better and faster, especially on mobile. Enter. And now we get to pick the port for the WireGuard. This is the default port. Now you could change that if you know what you're doing. Some reasons to change the default port is if WireGuard ever has like a zero day hack or something, a bunch of malicious hackers out there sniffing for that specific port. And then when they find port 51820, they know it's probably WireGuard. So then they can use the zero day exploit to get into your VPN. Changing it would add a little bit more security, but this is fine for my application. Enter. If you changed your port, write down that number. Just note, that port can be anywhere between the numbers of 49,152 and 65,535. Those are what the IANA officially recommends for ephemeral ports. Now we get to pick a DNS provider. I've been using Quad9. It's a free and open DNS service. It's also the first service recommended by PyVPN. And those are people that actually know what they're doing here. And you can pick any others and try them out for yourself. Enter. Here we can make it easier to connect to our VPN using an actual domain name like samsvpn.com. Or we could just use the public IP address of your router. I'm going to be doing it that way. And now here we have unintended upgrades. This is a good thing to include. All these security patches, it's like automatically updating when there's a security patch. Yes. Okay. Now, let's reboot the Raspberry Pi.
All right. And now get back into the terminal. SSH Pi Raspberry Pi for me. Password. And now we can start adding profiles onto our VPN. And you want to add one profile for each different device. So like a profile for my phone, a profile for my iPad. And to do that, we're going to type the command pi vpn add. And now enter name, phone. And now we've generated a QR code even that we can get the configuration files. They make it really easy on the phone. So I'm going to download the WireGuard app on my phone. And now we're gonna add a tunnel. So we can add from a QR code. And how you get the QR code is you do the command pi VPN dash QR. And then I want one, the phone. And then just take your phone, scan the QR code, name it. I'm gonna name it pi VPN. And just, you have to allow it to do your VPN settings, and uh, you're good from there. Sometimes IPv4 or IPv6 forwarding gets disabled on your Raspberry Pi, so let's check to see if that is the case or not. We need it to be enabled. sudo nano etc sysctl.conf Okay, right here, this line needs to be uncommented equal to 1 net.ipv4.ip underscore forward equals one. And then also this line here needs to be uncommented and equal to one. That's with IPv IPv6. If you made those changes, it's control S and then control X to exit. Now there's one more thing we have to do and that's setting up port forwarding on our router. Go back into your router page, Google port forwarding for my Netgear router, port forwarding for my Linksys router. In my case, I go advanced, oop, got to log in again. I go advanced, advanced setup, port forwarding. And I've set it up here. Basically, what you do, I, I suggest adding a custom service, whatever your service name is. And we want UDP, not TCP, unless you really know what you're doing. I don't use UDP. And then that port from earlier. So in this case, we used the port 51820. Maybe you selected a different port, but that's what we're going to put in here. And then the IP address, which for my case, it's 192.168.1.10. And then apply those settings. I've already done that, so cancel. I called it VPN. It's in this port with this IP address. Back on the phone, turn on the VPN. How do I show you that it's actually working? I'm going to turn off Wi-Fi on my phone, so we're on data, and then I'm going to search what's my IP. So this is my public IP with my router. And if I Google the same thing on my phone, what's my IP, boom, same number. You see I have the VPN connected up here. If I stop the VPN, so go into WireGuard, turn off the VPN, and now I'm on my cellular data network and I go back into Chrome and search what's my IP, a completely different address. Say you're not connecting with your mobile phone and you need the actual .com files to connect to the WireGuard app on your Windows, Ubuntu, or Mac machine, or whatever Linux distribution you're using. You can find the config files in home-pi-configs. And now if we look at the contents within home-pi-configs, ls, list home dash pi dash configs we can see my phone.conf files right there what does that file look like home pi configs and then let's look at that file so there's a private key there's an IP address a DNS that's for the interface side and then also on the peer side we have some more details if you need any other help with pi VPN don't forget to type pi VPN dash dash help 
and it can give you a lot of other options. That's how you do it. It's how you set up a VPN on Raspberry Pi. And there are a lot of other things you can do from here. You can make it into a file storage system. You can make it into a home privacy system. World is your oyster. Let me know if you have any questions. Give this video a like if it's helpful. I also make more Raspberry Pi tutorials. Feel free to look at my channel to check them out. And subscribe to stay updated with new videos in the future. Thanks for watching.